Our Father and our God, we thank you and we exalt you. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for bringing us together once again on this platform to look into your word. Our Lord and our God, we just ask you that today, let your spirit direct every affair, every discussion, every utterance. We pray, O oh Lord God, as we look at this word of life, let it not only minister, but let it transform our heart and let it change us to the perfect image of Christ. Even for those who will watch the video later, we pray, O oh Lord God, for the transformation that you hold, that your spirit alone can give. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And thank you, everyone, for showing up today. We started a series over a month now on the influence of the aberrant Christianity or false gospel that came from America uh, to Nigeria. And we will continue in that regard today. Unfortunately, what we call Christianity or what we call faith that is popular today is actually not faith but witchcraft. But when we make statements like this, that the popular teachings on faith is witchcraft, that looks like an hasty conclusion. We need to prove it. He that alleges must prove. We're going to prove that today using two videos. There is first a video we are going to listen to. It's five minutes or thereabouts. It's a recording from a practicing wizard or a practicing witch who will be teaching on the satanic doctrine of the law of attraction. By the end of that five minutes video, about 30, min 30 seconds to the end, she gave a summary of our five principles, of our, of our five steps to practice the satanic teaching on the law of attraction. Unfortunately, the very same five summaries or five conclusions that this professional wish came to is the very same teaching that was being taught by a prominent word of faith teacher in Nigeria. This prominent word of faith teacher did not even teach this doctrine in his church alone. He taught this doctrine in Pojo Yemade's church. So this is what they know as faith. Uh, today we'll be looking at this First of all, from a practicing with which then we we'll look at the man of God's teaching, then we we'll look at the word of God. And uh, we trust the Holy Spirit to open many more people's eyes, the way he has opened our eyes, to call this thing the name it is, evil. And then that those who, have, those who see it the way it is as evil may run away and run to the truth. Before we watch that video, I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1. 1 Timothy verse chapter 4, verses 1 says, Now, the Spirit expressly says, this is from Apostle Paul, it doesn't mean that the Spirit wasn't talking before, but there's something going on. Pay attention. When Hebrew writing, Hebrew way of writing, pile up times upon times, or want to also pay attention, like Jesus would say, verily, verily, or truly, truly, is pointing our attention that what I'm about to say is very important. So now, the Spirit speaks expressly. Pay attention. Then what does the Spirit say? It says, in the later times, not only in the time of the apostles, but sometimes after, which is our time, some will depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Baba Edabatoki always says something, that in worship, there's no neutrality. There's no middle ground in worship. You either worship the true God in spirit and in truth, or you worship Satan. There's no middle ground. And this text affirms that. You either worship God in the right faith, or you fall into the doctrines of demon. Let me use a simpler English. NLT says, now the spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirit and teachings that came from demons 
Brothers and sisters watching us in our life now, or those who listen to this recording afterward, we today, by the help of the Spirit, want to uncover this doctrine of demons that is purportedly called Word of Faith in our land. There's a video we're going to listen to now. It's from a professional witch who will teach a wizard principles and technique. I don't believe that should be in the church, but unfortunately, we will find it in the church shortly. Sir, can you please play the video of that woman? And then okay. after that, we'll go to the pastor. Hello and welcome to this video that's going to show you the five steps to manifesting anything that you want and changing any part of your life using manifestation and attraction and spiritual laws of the world. My name is Noor Hibber. I'm a coach and I'm an author and podcast host. And I'm super excited to bring you my signature manifesting method. So step one, what's really important when it comes to manifestation is knowing what you actually want to manifest, like truly knowing what do you desire? What is your goals? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to attract into your life? Um, once you've got really, really clear on that, you go on to step two, which is understanding what the limiting beliefs are underneath each of those. We must remember that when we manifest, it is our subconscious belief systems um, putting off the energy into the ether, into the infinite field of possibilities, into the universe, um, not our conscious thoughts. So if you are trying to manifest more money, but deep down you believe that you're not worthy or that rich people are greedy, or perhaps you're trying to manifest your soulmate, but deep down you think the marriage is actually awful, for example, you are going to have conflicting desires. It's really important that you understand what is the but below your desire and you become aware of them. The most important thing about subconscious belief systems is that when you bring them into awareness, they don't have the stronghold on you. And then also it takes you to step three, which is reprogramming your mind for success. So once you've like, OK, no, like I see, like I believe this about this. I believe this about this. It's blocking me. Now what? Well, step three is all about reprogramming. Your brain is an incredible thing. There's a thing called neuroplasticity, which means that we can reprogram our mind and we can change our identity, which is essentially our belief systems that then govern how we show up in this world. One of my favorite ways for reprogramming is using things like hypnosis and meditations because you don't really have to do any willpower for them. Once you're aware of the subconscious belief systems, you can then decide and create a new identity that is going to be in alignment with that which you desire. Because I can tell you now, the level of thinking that got you where you are today is not going to be the level of thinking that's going to get you to where you want to be tomorrow or to get you to manifest your desires. So reprogramming, using hypnosis, visualizations, meditations is super, super, super important. Step four is less of a linear approach. Step four is more of a way of life, and that is tuning into Universe FM. When I talk about tuning into Universe FM, what I mean is being vibrationally aligned to that which you want to manifest. It is really important that you understand that with the law of attraction, light attracts like. So if you have a dream of manifesting more money, and when you have that money, you're going to be really happy, and you're going to go to Bora Bora, and you're going to lie on the beach, and you're going to feel this, this, and this. You've got to bring those feelings into the now because that is the way that you then call in your manifestations from another dimension into the 3d reality that you see right now so step four is something you're going to be doing every single day becoming aware of your emotions your thoughts the way that you behave the way that you interact with others and basically being a really good person and realizing that when you leave with love your manifestations are going to come way quicker so let's get on to step five so once you've done all of this stuff, you know what you want, you've watched your subconscious belief systems, you've reprogrammed your mind, you're tuning into Universe and FM and showing up as your best self every single day. What's going to happen in step five is you've got to meet the universe halfway and you've got to take physical action in the physical world. What I like to call inspired action, aka heart hustle. So once you have started to really put all that stuff into the universe and start to visualize and all of that amazing stuff, What's going to happen is the universe is going to give you guidance. You're going to get ideas, inspiration, signposts, books fall in your lap, emails fall in your inbox, people come into your life that are all going to be there to help guide you towards making your manifestation come to fruition. Your job is to follow that yellow brick road to get you to where you want to go. 
What's really important is you follow that inspired action. You take action every single day. You don't just sit on your bum watching Game of Thrones, eating Oreos, hoping that the things that you want to manifest are going to fall through the sky. The whole point of life is to grow. The whole point of life is to remember that you can manifest. And part of that growth means taking action outside of your comfort zone, pushing yourself. Like I said before, the person that you were yesterday that got you to where you are today is not going to be the person that's going to get you to tomorrow and where you want to go. And the person that's manifested all this amazing stuff. So let's just do a recap of the five steps. Number one, know what you desire and really get clear on that. And make sure that you really want the things that are on your list too. Step two, become aware of the subconscious belief systems and conditioning that could be in conflict with that which you want to manifest. Step three, reprogram your mind for success, choose a new identity and start to really step into the next level version of you. Step four, tune into Universe FM and become vibrationally aligned on a daily basis so that you attract that which you want into your life quicker. Step five, take action. You've been given a physical body in the physical world so that you can take physical action and meet the universe halfway in making what you want come to reality. So she summarized a thought into five. Uh, five steps to manifest. So for those of who are following us, you must have listened to her very well. Uh, for those who watch the video online, they can re rewind this aspect because she seems to be fast, but you need to listen patiently. She uh, itemized five principles, five ways to manifest whatever you, whatever you desire, five ways. Know what you want, understand the limits, um, reprogram your mind, visualize, meditate. Number four, tune into the universal uh, power, bring your uh, become, uh, bring your vibration alive. Then number five, you need to take action. And when you do all these things, these are the five steps of law of attraction. When you do these things, you can attract anything you want. You can attract money. You can attract your spouse. You can attract success. You can attract business partners. Just know what you want. Understand the limits on the leads. Reprogram your mind through visualization and meditation. Tune into the universal power. Increase your vibration. Your vibration will go out and they will be, will be connecting to other vibrations and to be attracting those vibrations. And then act. Because action brings you midway into, into the universe. So when you release vibration into the universe and it's tuned to other vibrations, it's hanging right there, but you take action. Action will bring you midway universe will bring this power midway and in action you collide and then you have manifestation this is not by this is simple word this is simple witchcraft how to get results in the occultic world okay we've summarized the occultic world let's see if it's truly in the church the five laws of faith number one is communion. That's prayer. Number two is revelation. That is extracting the wisdom of God. Pastor Puju was dealing with that the other day. Number three is conviction. That's where faith comes. So whenever you hear Jesus say, he say, if you have faith. So a lot of people try to start with level three. Forgetting that there are processes behind that generates that. If you have faith, then you can speak. Then level four is now confession. And level five, which is the final stage, is action. And then what you're going to have is manifestation. Yeah, his own is done. This is a, you want me to replay it again? Play it one more time, sir. Okay. The five laws of faith. Number one is communion. That's prayer. Number two is revelation. That is extracting the wisdom of God. Pastor Puju was dealing with that the other day. Number three is conviction. That's where faith comes. So whenever you hear Jesus say, he say, if you have faith. So a lot of people try to start with level three. Forgetting that there are processes behind that generates that. If you have faith, then you can speak. Then level four is now confession. Yes. Five. 
which is the final stage. <laughs> The pastor, the man of God, in, in, a, in an inverted comma, said, there are five laws of faith. The new ager said, there are five laws of law of attraction. And the pastor said, law number one is communion, and he called that communion prayer. Law number two is revelation. He said that revelation is extracting the wisdom of God. The new ager said, understanding the limits under which you want to manifest. Repositioning your mind through visualization and meditation. But man of God calls it revelation. The man of God calls number three conviction. That's where faith comes from. After you have applied principle one and principle two, it catapults you into level two. And the man of God said number four is confession. So you start from communion, you go to extracting the wisdom of God, then you get to conviction, then you start speaking. Then number five, man of God said, it's action. But the new age also ended number five by action brings you midway into the universal power. Action connects you to the energy of the universe. So where the wish that we, the, the new age ended is also where the pastor ended. What the pastor just did differently is that he sprinkled Jesus and he used some words that are familiar to scriptures, revelation, communion, conviction, confession. So to an unsuspecting mind, this man is actually a Christian and is preaching the word of God. But what we have done today is to expose this evil called the doctrine of demon of the word of faith theology that is widespread in our time. I know the Holy Spirit will help us to be able to do good work to this topic so that those who are held captive in this seductive doctrine of demon, we find freedom and run to the true and living God. Please, brothers and sisters, having watched, having watched these two same teaching, please let's start from general comments. Then we we'll move to particular commentaries. Please go ahead. Any general comment for now? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not really too concerned with the, you know, with the the first video. <laughs> but uh, I'm alarmed by the second video. Because the first video is, the woman is just speaking what she believed in. She is not disguising it as a teaching you know, from the scripture. She's not pretending to be a Christian. She wasn't trying to hide where she was coming from and where she was going. But the second video is alarming because there is a man who, who stood before an assembly that is supposed to be a gathering of saints and he's preaching this nonsense. And uh, Brother Paul, I beg to disagree with you. Because you said he sprinkled Jesus. He only mentioned Jesus. <laughs> but it was not even it was not even referencing Jesus in the real sense. It was merely telling them Jesus talk about faith. And nothing in every of those steps he had mentioned you know, actually in many we reference God. Revelation of what? Conviction of what? Faith in what? The faith he is talking about has nothing to do with God. From the very beginning to the end, we can see that what this man is doing, like they always do, is to try and elevate man to the position of God. Is to try to elevate the self in such a way that is presenting to every of his listeners that you have the ability in yourself to begin to do things 
that is only in the domain of God to do. Because at the end of the day, what he is trying to tell them is that when you follow this step, you can have whatever you want. Just like that uh, uh, lady in the first video said, you can have whatever you want, not because you believe God will, is the one who is going to give it to you, but you believe that when you practice that step one to step five, you know, it will work. And that's, you know, that's purely new age teaching. That's purely witchcraft. The only difference between him and that woman in the first video is the fact they were standing in a place that is called a church. He carried a title that he said he is a pastor. And in his own way, he is teaching the same witchcraft that that woman mm. has taught. Only mm. this time, he said he is teaching it to those who are believers in Christ. That's just my observation. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know what that woman, uh, when I was introduced to the world of faith theology, what that woman has said, if we came to a church meeting and that's what we hear, we do not know that that is not Christianity. That's one of the reasons why I brought this video up. Popularly speaking right now, in world of faith Pentecostalism, what that woman has said is a classical church service. Go ahead, sir. I, I actually, I, I think, I think the the video from the lady uh, should be played in every home that calls itself Christian. Unedited, the way the way you people have had it, unedited. So that hopefully, hopefully, maybe, maybe somebody might wake up to, rea to the realization that this is what I've been hearing mm. for about 40 years from people who come forward to say that they are actually ministers of the gospel. That is why that is why I advise that we should not abridge it. We should not bring it in a summarized form. Mm. You people, you've been hearing that talk in detail for years. The only thing had always been that the speaker had always told you that he was a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. It, it, is, it is the major stumbling block to the gospel in Nigeria. The talk by that lady is the major stumbling block. Why you cannot go on the street of Lagos and evangelize? Because whatever you are going to say, the words you are going to say, the, 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 the lingos like faith, for example, everybody will tell you he knows what faith is. That he has had, he, he, he hears faith every week, every Sunday from his pastor. And his pastor has told him that in actual fact, because he was created in the image of God, he was actually a little God. What the lady was saying was simply giving further representation to the teaching of little gods that people have had every, virtually every Sunday in deeper life from Mr. Kumuyi. The idea that the idea that they were little to God, that God created them, since God who created them spoke things into existence, they too they can speak things into existence. That's part of what William Kumuyi has taught for about 50 years. And if you if you know anything about Nigerian Christianity, when they are mentioning 
who and who are you going to recommend to your friend to attend their churches? More than 80% of serious Christians in Nigeria will mention William Kumui. So what the lady said is something that we should repeat over and over and over while telling people what you are hearing is from the mouth of a, of a witch. It is a witch that is giving you now a training. As my brother said, we have to remark to people that this lady is not hiding her identity. The difference between the lady you had this evening or this, at this moment and David Oedepo is that David Oedepo is a chameleon. He's hiding his own identity. That is the difference. The major work I believe that God has given us to do for whatever time we have is to wake people up that what they have been having, masquerading as Christianity, have been ideas that come from the from the occult. They should listen to, to, to witches and wizards. They should listen to, to Hindu preachers. <clears throat> pure Hindu. Pure Hindu. Listen to them. When you do, you discover that what William Kumuyi teaches about the power of the mind. Not many people know that what deeper life teaches is actually mind science. If you make up your mind, this, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase the, the woman. If you make up your mind and you, 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 you are strong enough in your mind, whatever you want can, can be manifested. Mm -hmm. The lady was truthful. Because of her truthfulness, we should listen to her. At the beginning, she said, this is love attraction. Many people have been listening to us, have been watching us, but they do not have any training in what they call law of attraction. They do not know that what they have listened to all of their lives, from the time that they were babies in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, in, in deeper life, in Winner's Chapel, were teachings of the laws, laws of attraction. You can get these things done. Please, I advise people, when they watch this video, at some stage, they should cut off from this video and go and listen and watch the teachings of David Oedepo on what he calls faith. They should just go and watch the teachings. On our archives, there are some clips of David Oedepo teaching faith. Faith. In fact, I come out open and close. Which, according to him, are things that you do. With faith, you can do anything you like. Mm -hmm. Let me say, let me say, and my dear ladies, when they say that faith makes you equal to God, this is exactly what they are talking about. So this is actually a summary of what you hear virtually every day in David Edeko's church. So called church. This, to some extent, is what we hear from in William Kumu's church. This is what we hear. And the thing has permeated. The thing, the thing has permeated. A few years ago, I, 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 I was talking to people in my village. And the pastor of Deeper Life Church in my village, a carpenter, was picking a fight with me because, because I would not accept that he had power in his mouth to decree whatever he wanted, and it was going to happen. A carpenter. And he was so cocksure because William Kumi had taught them that no, you see, whatever, whatever the Lord Jesus Christ did uh, with the, to the fig tree in, in Mark chapter 11 was an example of how you do it. That was what that is what William Kumi had taught them. 
You only need to stand away from the subject. That is the fig tree. Stand away. Believe what you are going to say. Just believe it's strong enough and utter it. The moment you utter it, you go and take your lunch. The fig tree, whatever fig tree you have, your fig tree is going to wither immediately. That is what William Kumi, I'm mentioning names. I'm mentioning names. He can, he can, he, he can sue us if he cares. And if, if that is what William Kumi teaches in his so-called deeper life, deeper, deeper Christian life ministry, what do you think they will teach us? So uh, people have been taught witchcraft. So for the lady that is actually a publicly acclaimed witch, uh, me, I will say that it is good that we brought her into the open. God may use it to wake somebody up that the faith of Christianity it surely cannot it surely cannot be taught by a witch. Yeah. And therefore, if what if what this lady is saying is the same thing that you had listened to from David Depo for 45 years, for 40 years, and it's the same thing that William Pui teaches, is the same thing that uh, with this man, what they call a letter in the assembly, the same thing he teaches. The same thing. Actually, every one of so your so-called man of God that you brought to us, basically, is basically repeat all of them, all of them, the younger and the old. That is what they teach, and that is what the devil has caused them to be teaching for the last forty or forty-five years. Masquerading it, putting insanity. Thank you, sir. Right, Kevin, please uh, make your contributions before we start going deeper in this discussion. Go ahead, sir. You are muted. Thank you very much. Once again, okay. Um, this uh, issue, this uh, uh, of, uh, discussion, it's a very crucial one. Because um, from the beginning of that tip, we heard the law of attraction, the law of attraction. And it's no different from this book, Think and Go Grow Rich. I believe some of us are very mm -hmm. conversant with Napoleon that. Hill. Exactly. Napoleon and these Hill. are what, these kind, these kind of books are what believers or Christians are reading and taking into heart to manifest their hidden secret or the, the book, The Secret. It's also a satanic book. However, roots. very true, very correct. Thank you very much, sir. However, these kind of books or this kind of teachings contradict the word of God. How do we know that? Notice in Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, the devil did not ask man to worship him. The devil did not ask man to worship him. He said, eat of that fruit and you will become like God knowing what is good and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can manifest it yourself. You can determine it yourself. Isolating the total dependency from God. But you are doing it yourself. Now, I think they, these, these are um, thinking it and manifesting it. If you conceive it in your mind, you will manifest it is really, uh, the, it, it, it's from this scripture, Genesis chapter, if you re read from Genesis chapter 11, it's a misinterpretation of that scriptures. If you, you say the people came together in Babylon, they thought in their mind that they want to build a tower towards heaven. And God said, what they have taught in their hearts, they will manifest it. Meaning, the mindset is so powerful. But forgetting that, that statement was misinterpreted. Not because they did something to carry out, to carry it out, but rather they went against the will of God, staying in one geographical location, not expanding. That is kicking against Genesis chapter 9 from verse 7. The command God gave to Noah that they should fill the earth, fill the earth. And they said they want to be in one geographical location. 
So that is against the will of God. If we can think it and bring it into manifestation, we don't need God. Yeah. We don't need Christ. We are God of our oh. own. It's, it's what uh, um, uh, the Edda said, Baba said, ye are gods. And some Christians acclaim that passage. Don't you know we are gods? We are gods. And God is against the will of God. Because Jesus said something that don't you know ye, it is written in the scriptures that ye are gods. But he was referring to something, the judges, that walk against the will of God. According to Psalm 82 from verse 6 and 7. Psalm 82 from verse 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. Jesus was directing them. If you say I am the, if you made mention of, or, or you claim me that I, 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 I am contradicting God's word because I said I am the son of God. How come they did not stone David that made that statement? How come God also made statements in Psalm chapter 82 from verse 6 to 7 that ye are gods? Why now are you, are you, are you uh, attacking me against uh, blasphemy? So, these things is, is what every believer ought to take caution and take note of. We cannot do it on our own. Let us not depend on ourselves. Let us not depend on our mind. Our mind is corrupt. If our mind is pure, the Holy Spirit will not come and indwell us to lead us in the way of God. Because of time, let me leave it here for all that contribution. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, uh, uh, Batoki is giving us a suggestion. But before we go into that suggestion, uh, what is the law of attraction? The law of attraction is a philosophy. The law of attraction is a philosophy suggesting that positive thoughts bring positive results into a person's life. Why negative thoughts bring negative outcomes let me say that again because this is this seems to be discipleship class in my church right now <laughs> this definition <laughs> it seems to be discipleship class the, the bible school we went to this was what we were taught a philosophy suggesting that positive thought brings positive results into person's life why negative thought bring negative outcome so when Jesus said he was hungry, he was actually going to die of hunger. When he said he was thirsty on the tree, he was actually going to die of thirst. I know in this, in the wizard's uh, five principles of love attraction and the pastor's five principles of faith, all, both of them ended on principle five as action. The action you take must never contradict what you are thinking. So, have you been to a church before when your pastor always say you should confess in the reverse order? If you don't have money in your pocket, say, I am rich. If you, uh, uh, if there's no gas in your car, say, my car is full. Oh, this is, these are the things we are taught in, 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 in Word of Faith, in, in, in Living Faith. In Living Faith, which is Winner's Church, we are taught to speak in the reverse psychology. Never speak what you see. Speak what you are expecting. I mean, am I speaking someone's mind right there? Because someone who is listening to us will be familiar with what I'm saying. Don't speak the reality. Speak in the reverse order. Are you sick in your body? Say, I am not sick. I'm strong. Mm. Is there money you can't say, I am full? You have been in, inducted into, law, into the law of attraction, whereby you always speak in the reverse psychology. So you come to church, and the man of God re revisits this law of attraction topics again and encourage you to go back home and keep the positive. I mean, where do we see positive in the Bible? Anyway, you go to, uh, when you get back to your work on Monday, keep the positive. Don't confess negative. <clears throat> so when Timothy was sick and Paul said, take little wine for your ailment in 1 Timothy 5, is it was going to kill Timothy for confessing uh, that statement. See, you have been inducted into the law of attraction witchcraft. Law of attraction seeks to keep and sustain the positive thoughts. Why negative thought brings 
negative outcome. Let me say this again, Baba, and uh, everyone listening to me. People listening to us right now. Have you been to a church whereby you have a backdrop? When I say backdrop, the picture that your pastor put on the stage, not altar, not pulpit. There's aeroplane. There's money. If I there's a redeeming Houston, uh, but I probably know, I, I don't want to mention the name. Their backdrop is dollar bill, dollar bill. That's love attraction. What you see, your focus becomes your focus. <clears throat> love attraction. Have you been to a church? I've been there before. Whereby the backdrop is certificates, marriage symbol. So you come to church all the time, and that's what you keep seeing. They are trying to, what we thought it was, they were trying to help our imagination to think about the positive things of life. Unknown to us that they've given us a God. Our belly, our desires became our God. So today's teaching is to uncover this law of attraction. It's everywhere in your church. In fact, have you been to a church where by beginning of the year, your pastor gives you a kind of big team of the year, like in winners, this year is the year of fortune. That's a law of attraction. You keep focusing on that declaration. The year of fortune. The year of open doors. The year of double-double. They give you kind of big teams, big cliche, big cliches to focus on. And that's what you should expect. That is law of attraction. So, Baba and brothers and sisters, virtually speaking, I don't know any church, me as a person, I don't know any church in Nigeria that is popular, that has not been influenced by this law of attraction teachings. I don't thank you. Uh you know as as you were speaking, you know, based on what you just said just now, practically every church, you know, is practicing this. It's not just in the Pentecostal and charismatic, alone, even the I think the so-called Aladra and spiritualist church are now doing the same thing. Uh, and that's where the danger is. We are living in a time and a season that, you know, lies and deceit has become the gospel. And the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom is nowhere to be found. You know, there's something that uh, I believe Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9 said. Colossians 2, verse 8 to 9. It said, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All these things that people are preaching, what we purely see in the church today, only very few places that the Bible is being taught. Only in few churches that disciple is being made for Jesus Christ. Most of these churches the pastors are making disciples for themselves or for their general overseer. It's only in a place you call church that somebody will mount the pulpit and be saying thing that has no relevance to Christ. You call a place a church. Somebody will mount the pulpit and be telling you stories. So people should be aware of what is going on. The church is a place where we are supposed to be taught the word of God, not a place where you gather and begin to tell them stories, you know, and be trying to apply scientific principles and be referencing <laughs> worldly writings and, uh, and uh, uh, all kind of things that has nothing to do with Christ. If I want to listen, to, you know, to how to make money, I go, uh, you know, attend uh, a business meeting. If I come to a church, you know, to be taught about God, I don't want you to be teaching me about how to make money. But unfortunately, that's what we are having. Human philosophy, worldly traditions and principles that people have put in place to now replace 
Christ, you know. And anybody who, who, who is listening or who will watch this video should take a moment. If you are truly concerned about the eternal salvation of your soul, they should take a moment, sit down and reflect and think about what is being said here. Because at the end of the day, hell has no exit point. Forget what the Catholic are telling you, there's a purgatory or anything like that. You go into hell, there's no coming out of there. There's no second chance. Hebrew 9, 27 said, it's given for man to die once. After that, there's judgment. So people should be aware of the gravity or what is being discussed so that we don't get deceived. This is just purely human philosophies, all kind of nonsense, you know, that we are hearing in church today. You, a pastor will preach for, for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, no single reference to the word of God. This is becoming really, really alarming. And I believe God himself is, you know, is going to expose, you know, and liberate as many as, are purely concerned about knowing him, you know, and uh, and getting closer to him. Thank you, sir. Um, Barack Howard, please go ahead. The uh, muted. It's it's gone. Okay. Um, I, system. I also want to give a comment again before we. I think the Lord contrasting that which with which with the uh, with the Lord's prayer will be our final thought. I also want to do another contrast. The the pastor started with communion revelation, which is extracting the wisdom of God confession. Um, uh conviction confession and action and then manifestation is guaranteed man if once you take those five steps it's so certain the same thing the wizard said you want to do those steps and you add it with action action connected with the energy of the universe you manifest brothers and sisters true bible faith does not eradicate the sovereignty of god i mean we are christians we read the Bible. For example, people of Israel in First Samuel chapter 4, they had faith. They brought the co Ark of Covenant. But they were disappointed. True Bible faith does not eradicate the sovereignty of God. True Bible faith is not arrogant. True Bible faith does not become the subject and the object. Nothing is guaranteed. That's why people will pray, may the Lord grant you peace. We pray. If, we, if everything is guaranteed and subjected to the use of our mind and backed up by our voice, then supplanted by our actions, we have become another God. True Bible faith is an humble plea, which is where we are going to end when we look at the Lord's Prayer today. If you have been following the law of attraction teachings, it's not just that you are not a Christian. You are an enemy of God. Because God does not create us to be independent of him. In John chapter 15, verses 5 to, to 8, he said, when you pray, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatever you ask. By this, my Father is glorified. Praying, which is submitting to the sovereignty of God, it brings glory to God. But this is not prayer. This is an enemy of God who does not need God, who want to upturn and unseat God. So it's not just that people practicing this law of attraction things are not Christians alone, but you are not, you are an enemy of God, like Paul have said. And that is the act I really want to elevate. Maybe God can wake you up because this darkness is deep. I'm telling you, Baba, and everyone listening to me, if you have told me this seven, five years ago, I would have argued with you as well. Because when you are lost, you don't know how deep you are in darkness. You even fight it. But our humble plea is that people listening to this video, they just wake up and ask, beg God for mercy. Because this darkness is deep. 
and the hand is held. All right, Baba, please go ahead, then we'll go to Brad Kevin. Then, uh, I, I just want to support what our coordinator just, just said. The issue is the depersonalization of God. We, we eliminate God altogether. God is not necessary. The, the lady said, look, this, you, th there are some things in the ether. The ether, the ether is the void that you see. The ether is the void that you see when you look up into the sky. There are some things in the ether. The moment you plug into, into it, that thing is not God. The thing obeys your mind. You only need to have the, 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 your mind to be strong enough. The moment you have it, and that is just it, it will manifest. So God has totally been removed from the equation. You can do signs and wonders without God. That is the definition of witchcraft. What the lady does not know is that that statement cannot be true. Human beings don't have any power to do any science and wonder. There has to be a spiritual being that executes the science and wonders. Unknown to the deceived uh, woman, the devil has totally hidden himself away from her, not knowing that what she, what she calls law, law of attraction are actually prayer points to the devil. Everything she said, every, everything that the witches and wizards do are actually prayer points to the devil. So even though they give you the impression that a spiritual being is not necessary, I can let everybody know, no, no, no signs and wonder, no miracle ever happens without the presence and participation of a spiritual being. Who is that spiritual being is actually the issue. The, the, the laws of attraction people, they think they are clever. They remove God from the equation. They say the thing is actually in your mind. You, you, know, you know your mind is very powerful. You know your mind is very, very powerful. It's a lie. It's a lie. There's nothing in the mind of any man that can do astral travel by itself. A spiritual being is involved in it. There is nothing in the mind of any man that can actually bring miracles, signs and wonders, positive or negative, to be. It's a lie. The only thing is that the moment you remove God from it, the other God, unknown to you, installs himself. So what we are discussing, to emphasize it again, for people who will watch this video, whatever they think about our joblessness, is God's own way of sending the rope of salvation to them. They can grab the rope. They can grab that rope and climb to the Lord Jesus Christ to have mercy on them. But they can, they can say they don't care. But the truth is, the Bible is the only true book concerning spiritual beings and spirituality in the whole universe. Let, let, me, let, me, let me stop a little here, please. Bakayo, please go ahead. Let's have you now. OK, good. Oh, go ahead. All right, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, okay. Sorry, I was having network issues. All right. Um, yeah, I think, Brother Paul, you just nailed it. That's the truth. You just nailed it. You know, we, it's just clear what the goal is. It all, it all began, you know, from the voice of the serpent in Genesis chapter 3. You know, the pattern is clear there. You see that in Genesis 3, I think verse 4, let me check it here. Verse 4 says, you know, that was a serpent talking to Eve. And it says, then the serpent said 
said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, you see, there is a like, I usually say there is a like God that is not like God. And there is a like God that is like God. God created man in his image and his likeness. That's talking about alignment. He's talking about being in alignment with God. He created man to be, you know, um, subject to him. That's actually what it means. So being the image of someone is, you know, it's just like when the Bible says that um, man is created in the image of God, the woman is was made in the image of man. Do you understand what you understand? The Bible also says that. That the woman was made in the what is that image? It's talking about the person that is, in other words, the woman is made, you know, it's not as it's not a, it's not as in a slave, like like as it were, but under the authority, that's the, the word, under the authority of man. Just as man is was made under the authority of God. So they like. God that the Bible talks of that he credits to man is talking about alignment being created under the authority. That's why you see Jesus give that parable. Um, uh, not it wasn't a parable, it was what the I think the centurion or so said, you know, that I'm a man under authority, which means I'm obedient to my authority. That's why I can say to this one, go and it goes, and to the other one, come and it goes, because I'm under. But you see, this will teach a like God that is a rival of God. Because that is the like God that Satan was selling to Adam and Eve here. The like God that Satan was selling was the one he pioneered. Rebellion against God too. You know, because he said, I will be like the most high. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will be like the most high. That is claiming the divinity of God. God does not share, he didn't share his divinity with anybody. In fact, he cannot because his divinity is him. You know? But the likeness that he talks about is alignment. But you see, they use the same terms for different meanings. So Satan sold this rebellious behavior to man. That you see, you don't need to be under God's authority. God knows the day you eat of this, you will become independent of God. That's what he's saying there. Like me. I can't you say I don't take others? You will become independent from God so that you will be able to do whatever you want. You will be able to get what can't can't you see what the the new age person or you know spiritualist was teaching? Because Pentecostalism is new age spirituality wrapped up in Christian language. It's new age spirituality, whether you name them from Rede Paul to uh, uh, to uh, David Obuelli that we saw on the video of, of um, Dominion City, all of them, because it's about dominating, it's about, it's about control, and that's witchcraft. Witchcraft is about control, to, to, be, to sit in the, in the seat of control of your life, instead of submitting to God. True Christianity, in true Christianity, you lose control because that's how we were created. We are not created in control. We are created under authority. That is true Christianity. Christianity does not seek to control your life, to control your destiny. That is witchcraft. That is the rebellion taught as Christianity. It's exactly the lie of Satan that you will be as God, knowing good from evil. In other words, you become the reference point, the definition of your own good. You don't take, God says this is good, this is evil. No, you don't take it from God. You become the one that defines what is good for you. You define what is evil for you. You, you are the one that says, this is what I want. That's what that statement means. Can't you see what the, the New Age spiritualist was saying? You must know what you want. It doesn't matter what God wants. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what the will of God is. It's irrelevant. God is out of it. The question is, what do you, the universe now is, you know, revolves around you. And if you go down in that Genesis chapter 3, um, verse, was, um, I think verse, is it 22 or so? 22 says, then the Lord God said, behold, 
the man has become like one of us. So was Satan right or wrong? Satan was right. The point was that he was teaching man how to be a rival of God. And God confirmed it that, yes, now man has become an enemy, like what uh, Paul is saying. It's not just that you are just doing something harmless. You are being coached to become an, an active enemy, an active enemy of God, in, you know, a, 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 an agent of the devil used by Satan. So God confirmed that this man has become like one of us. Knowing good and evil, that is the point there. He's now his own boss. He takes orders from no one. He's the one that gives orders. He determines what happens in his life. Then God, if you read down what you see, God had to say, so that he doesn't put his hand to take up the tree of life and live forever. God had to send him out. Because it was not a good thing. He was going to die as a rebel of God, like Satan. He was going to be doomed for life, for, for all eternity, rather. He was going to be doomed, and it was out of God's love. God did not want him to be doomed for all eternity. It was out of God's love that God had to chase him from the Garden of Eden so that he would not, you know, become, he would not remain in that state and be lost forever. So this, like God, is, is, is leaving God's authority and becoming your own authority. It's what comes out of your mouth. It's what is in your mind. It's not what is in God's mind, which we have as the scriptures. It's not what is in what God says, which we have as the scriptures. Not using it as a pamphlet for ritual, but submitting to it, submitting to the words of God, not using the word of God to put in your mouth and start practicing witchcraft and say it's the word of God you're speaking. No, it's submitting to it. So, so um, I, I, let me just highlight, he, he, he used the word, the law of faith, David Uboli, the law of faith, and he, was, started teaching, he started teaching law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 3, because we need to look at what they are using, because they, they sprinkle these scriptures, but use them to push ideas that have nothing to do with those scriptures. You know, Romans chapter 3, uh, from verse... Uh, let me read from verse 26. It's actually 25 that is the scripture. But verse 26 says, where is boasting? Because we want to get the context. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. So this is where that statement was made. Now look at the next verse. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Apart from the apart deeds of the, the law. So you see, the context is talking about putting your trust in Christ. In other words, instead of working out your, instead of, instead of uh, by your own uh, righteousness or your own effort, you earn your salvation. No, you, it, it, the, the law of faith says you should put your trust in the works of Christ, the finished works of Christ. That is the law of faith. It's not telling you how to manifest your reality or what you want. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. He's talking about, because he now concluded that we are justified not by the, our own human effort, our works. No. So the law of faith is, some, is what excludes boasting. But you see, this law of attraction that they are teaching why shouldn't you boast in it if you're able to follow these laws according to them, these steps? Uh, prayer, which is enchantment, by the way, that they call prayer for them. The revelation, which is you know, entering into an altered state of consciousness, because the prayer is usually those tongues, those very repetitions. It helps them to get what they call revelation. It's actually gaining an altered state of consciousness. These are new age practices. These guys are using uh, scriptural terms to to sugarcoat, prayer, revelation, then conviction. He said that one is faith. Because once you enter into that altar state of consciousness, the spirit takes over you so that you cannot speak. Because it, according to well, once you get the revelation, you cannot speak. It's like you rise to the level of God so that as God can speak and it happens, by the time you've built that spiritual energy in the prayer, in quote, which is, uh, um, which is the incantations, because remember the Jenis and Jambres, Remember when Moses was doing his signs and wonders, Genesis and Jambres, the Bible said it was by, through their incantations, their enchantments. Their enchantments, they were able to do that. So they need to enchant 
so that they will enter that altered state, so that the spirit will not, you know, they will attract the spirit to be involved. So that as they speak, the spirit goes to, you know, that's the uh, positive energy, you know. See, I don't know how, I don't know how people cannot see this. I don't know. This is new age. And then confession, because that's when you now speak it. And then action. You know, so I don't know, just to save time, I, I want to plead with people, please, this is supposed to make you an, a, a rebel against God. But just before I drop the device, I stop. James chapter 4, from verse 13 to 17. James chapter 4, that one is very important. Because this is James speaking. And James says there, he says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen uh, tomorrow. For, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. In other words, you that is listening to us today, and you've heard what the apostle said, that uh, you know what is good, and you continue to do that rebellion against God. Remember, he, he didn't say, if you're above 70, uh, this applies to you. Whether you are young, whether you are old, you can die at any time. You see, these people try to make you feel important, feel that you're anything. Whether you are young, whether you are old, you should say, if God permits us to live, if it is his will, you don't control it. You don't speak it into a being. You don't call it forth. You don't visualize. You don't, you're not in control. Step down. That Christianity tells you to you know, return to where God created, how he created us to be. Under his authority, not usurping his authority. Mm. So I appeal to you, please, this is what the Bible teaches. These people are teaching you things that will make you an enemy of God. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, Bora. Bora Coyote. Uh, it seems you should just drop it there, but uh, Bora, another Coyote is uh, your hands are up, but uh, these thoughts are just too uh, important for, for this recording. We'll leave it at that. There will be no more topping of So, but how they so go ahead? Um, Ida Batoki will know what to do when the recording, the production okay. is made. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to um, quickly add to what my namesake has said. Um, I think this is obviously a deceit, and the whole strategy of the enemy is that people don't know the truth and know the true Christ. And fundamentally, this is what is being preached in Pentecostal churches. Anybody <laughs> that has spent time in Pentecostal church, <laughs> bra Paul, am I lying? This is the normal teaching. <laughs> That's it, is, it is the normal <laughs> teaching. This That's is what they this all teach, all of them. Mm. Because that's what their father, Kenneth Hagin, was teaching. It's that mm. all what that's all what they teach. Unfortunately, mm. it is not found in the Bible. Mm. And unfortunately, some of people don't know it's not even Christian, it's not some people don't know it's not even biblical. That is new age. And I'm glad we have seen someone that is not cloak are uh, teaching in Christianity, but just came out and said it. This is not Christianity. It is not. And this is the card of the enemy to keep people deceived so that they don't know the truth. Because it is only the truth that they set know free. that can set them free. And it is only the truth that will enable them to know the true Christ that died and rose for the salvation of men. This is just the strategy of the enemy to keep them from knowing the truth. And what I just want to add is to whoever is hearing this, 
This is sending you straight far away from the one that died and rose to save you. This is sending you in the opposite direction from exactly what God desires, to, to, from the person exactly God desires you to know. That is the purpose of it. There is no other way. And like Paul wrote in First Timothy 4, he says, in the latter times, people Some will depart from the faith. Depart from the faith. They would, to they would spirit. listen to the seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, you know. Amen. And that's all what this is. It's unfortunate. Some people are still feeding on this as we are speaking. They don't even see anything wrong in it. And one of the reasons is because, like I always say, to them, Christianity is result-oriented. Not person-oriented. It's not like Paul that I might know him, the fellowship of his suffering. It's not a desire to know a person, Jesus Christ. It's results. They are looking for results. That's why they remain in this deceit. Whoever sits and says, I really want to know who this Jesus is, that person will begin to gradually draw away from all this deceit. The reason why all this deceit is hooking these people up is because they want results. They don't want to know a person, the Lord Jesus, that died and rose for his church. They want results, and it is unfortunate. And I pray that whoever reads this will know that from the evidence we have produced now, this is new age. It's nothing. The Bible yeah. says we should pray to God and ask that his will be done. As simple as that. He has not called us to conjure any other thing. Because power belongs to him. Power does not belong to him. But unfortunately, these people don't know that. And I just pray that somebody will hear all that has been said today. And their heart will open to see that they are, they are on the way to perdition. And God Thank can you. still make them turn around. Thank you. Thank you. You know, sir, I, I want to, as you, as Barakayo just said that now, I feel strongly to add this. He said, their Christianity is not person-oriented, but result-oriented. Why wouldn't they? Because what they have been taught about Christianity in the last 40 years is law of attraction. There is no way you have embraced law of attraction as Christianity, and one day you will suddenly metamorphose to be a Christian. So I admonish people listening to us right now. Maybe you should really reconsider that subject of Christianity. What really it is to be a Christian. And if you can reach out to this channel, that people can answer that question. Everybody, if over 25,000 young adults sat down under David of Wiley and he was teaching them law of attraction, and they could not see. I don't think they have blindness problem. They are dead in the spirit. They are not Christians. So if you are listening to us right now, and you've been calling yourself a Christian, you know, we had a teaching in Ikorodu uh, a couple of weeks ago, a man who is a minister, who was a minister in MFM for over 20 years. He said now on the October 17th of 2024, he just became born again. He never knew what Christianity was. After being a minister in MFM, for about 20 years, member for 22 years, on the 17th of October, he just knew what Christianity is. He said, now I just became born again. Maybe people listening to us should reconsider that topic, that subject of Christianity, what truly it is to be a Christian. And Abatoki always said that in the days, in the 80s and 70s, when you are introduced into Christianity, you know what you are coming into. Since that 70s to 82 to 86, early 90s, and up till now, in this of Jerry Easy, people don't know what they are coming into. They are inducted a in mass into law of attraction. And we can't expect them to just change and metamorphosize when they have not been converted. I, I just I plead with anyone listening to us, I plead to you, brothers and sisters, listening to us live on the YouTube, ask that question. Who is a Christian? How do you become a follower of Christ? Send a message. Who is a Christian? How do I become a follower of Christ? Because if you are listening to this thing, it's because of God's mercy that you are not dead. God's love all of us is patient. 
he was patient till all of us. All of us were beaten by the word of faith snake. We carried the vellum. But God's gracious mercy waited until we came to knowledge. And then we began to seek the true and the living God. So anyone listening to us also need that mercy. You have that mercy already. Please, please come. Come to the true Lord Jesus. Send your message. Reach out to us. Reach out to this channel. There will be numbers on the screen. Reach out to us. Let us teach you. Let us lead you and explain to you what truly is the true Christian faith. I really wish someone is requesting that we, we, we share the true Christian faith now. But I want it to be personal. Reach out to us. If the Lord is touching your heart, as you are listening to this, you find yourself caught up in the law of attraction church. And you are asking, what exactly is a true Christian faith? Reach out to the number on the screen. Let's make it personal. Let's talk to you one-on-one. -on -one so that um, you will find the light as you have found the light. And you do not walk in darkness again. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I, I think Sister Yele should pray for us. If she's in a place where she can pray. Okay. I'm, I'm in a place where I can pray, sir. Okay. okay. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. thank you once again for this opportunity that you have given unto us yes, to explain sir. your word, the understanding that you have given unto us through the reading and the study of the word. We yes, give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Mm -hmm. Thank you because we know that we are not doing this thing in our strength. Because in our strength, our flesh, we cannot do it. It is the spirit of God in us that is forcing us to do it. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we just commit this one that we have done today into your hands. And we pray for as many souls who are truly yearning to know you. Who really wants to know you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that for as many that we listen to this, you will manifest yourself unto them. You will give them the understanding in the name of Jesus. They will understand the word. And they will understand what is the true gospel. They will understand the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will come unto repentance and they will know you much more. They will hunger and thirst to know you. And your word has said that those who seek you will find you. Father, we pray that they will find you even in this little thing that we have done in the name of Jesus. And we just commit ourselves unto your hands, O oh Lord. It's only you can uphold us to the end. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will not just you will not be a signboard that will lead others to you, but will not get there. We pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, that you keep and perfect all that concerns us in the name of Jesus. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.